Hey guys, Meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Wednesday with this mountain weather report. All right, here we're going to start uh, with radar across the west, and we have a storm system moving through. It came out of California last night. Now it's moving into the interior Rockies, and it's still got a piece of that Pineapple Express with it, so it's still pretty warm. But Idaho, Montana, you can see the big uh, package of moisture sliding into the Tetons right now, the Wind Rivers. And there is precipitation sliding through uh, Salt Lake and the Wasatch as well. Haven't seen a lot of it actually materialize. But this is a storm. This is the first storm out of two. There's a second one that will come in later in the week. That one's going to be a notch colder. And I think we'll see better winds, better snow production with that second storm system. Let me zoom in. So here's the, uh, the radar out of Jackson. Notice you've got... Uh, snow and then even a mix and even some rain depending on your elevation i'll talk more about that rain snow line uh, coming up here in a second and you can see in salt lake there's action as well not a lot of lift with this particular storm system the ore graphics are weak so far coming out of salt lake and the uh, the wasatch now back to the west this is where the storm came from you you have a pause in the action here today across california the next storm will come in um, Thursday into Friday, and again, that looks to be just a little bit colder. Up in the northeast, a couple of streamers of snow. You're, that's really the northern periphery of what's going to be the ice storm, which will move into the, the Midwest, including a lot of big cities, Chicago, Indy, Columbus, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Washington, Philly, New York, um, this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow morning. So it's going to be a mess out there. Okay, here's water vapor. So we're back to this low-level moisture. Oranges and reds, drier air. And your moisture's in white. So you can see, let me just change this over to red. You've got a storm system right here. Um, and that's what's sliding through the, the inner mountain right now. Now behind it, you've got what's left over. You've got the big trough, which with colder air that's been sitting and spinning and snowing a little bit at sea level up through Seattle, the Cascades the high volcanoes, there's also this piece of energy. The two will actually merge and come in as one storm system into central California on, uh, say, Thursday and Friday, and then it will move into the interior and uh, to help to drop some of the rain, the rain snow lines to a lower elevation. And it might have just a little piece, uh, a weak atmospheric river contribution. You can see the spike here into the weak category between six and seven. And then it's a uh, and then it's a quiet period. Tranquility sets in with no atmospheric river, and then things might ramp up later in the period around 11, 12, 13. You can see the indication or the possibility of some weak contribution there. Um, so here are my bullet points. So we've got a storm system today, and then another one, two six and two seven, gradually lowering the rain snow line, but not perfect. And the Sierra on two six. It should drop down to about 7,000 feet. So that will really help out the snow production. It becomes much more efficient across a lot of the Wasatch Tahoe all the way down to Mammoth. In the Wasatch, today your rain snow line is about 7,500 feet. It's at about 8,000 tomorrow. And then with the next storm system on 27, it lowers to about 6,000 feet. Um, in the Tetons, it's about 5,000 feet today. Five to 5,500, somewhere in there. Um, tomorrow it lowers to 4,500 feet and then back to about 5,000 on 27. Here's my snow timeline. Best odds of snow for Big Sky, the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, uh, the Pacific Northwest, really just Washington State, um, and Tahoe in the Northeast. So Big Sky, you've got moderate accumulations today and then heavy on 27 with that final storm system. In the Wasatch, light to moderate accumulations today that has yet to be seen with the weak ore graphics. Um, 2.7 though looks much more promising. Um, <clears throat> heavy accumulations on 2.7. In Colorado, it's, it's light today. And then the afternoon of 2.7 into 2.8, light to moderate accumulations. And you can see uh, what's remaining everywhere else. Tahoe, your next storm is afternoon 2.6 into 2.7 with heavy accumulations. So let's drill down just a little bit here. So this is Alta, Utah, the forecast mediogram, <clears throat> effective about 9,000 feet. So 
What's very interesting is we've got winds today, wind gusts of 30, 35, 40, 45 miles per hour. With It's pretty much out of the south-southwest. Now, that is not a prime wind direction for a lot of the Wasatch. And this model correspondingly forecasts almost no accumulation, which is very interesting. There's moisture to be had, but can we squeeze it out? That's another question. And it's, you know, in the upper 20s to about 28, 29 for the high temp at 9,000 up there at Alta. And then it's a dry period. The wind gradually builds back to about 50 mile an hour gusts on Friday with that final storm system. Um, temperatures are going to be back into the 20s to about 30, 31, and then they're going to fall quickly behind the uh, the passage of a cold front. This squeezes out about six and a half, seven inches of snow out of that second. I think it could be higher. You know, <clears throat> I think it could be a little bit higher with that second storm because it'll be colder, and notice the wind direction is a little more favorable out of the west-northwest. It, it'll be interesting today to see what we get out of this this storm system that's moving through right now. I showed it to you on radar. Um, wind direction's not great, not a lot of lift. Temperatures are a little bit mild. Um, let's go over to uh, Wyoming, let's go up to Wyoming. So this is that Jenny Lake corridor. And this is at about, um, I've used this in the past few days. This is effective about 8,600 feet up there. So anywhere from the resort, Jackson Hole Resort, all the way up to the north side of the Grand Teton. So today, there's your column, and this squeezes out uh, about four inches of snow today. And the winds are going to be very strong, up to 60, mile, 60 65 mile an hour gusts um, today out of the west-southwest. And then it's a, it's a day of dry uh, weather on Thursday. And then on Friday, this is the colder, bigger storm system. And this squeezes out about a foot. Of accumulation from that storm on Friday the 7th. So good uh, storm skiing Friday and then a powder day Saturday for whatever's left over. But the winds on Friday are up to 65 miles per hour uh, and this is at 8600 feet. So the temperatures today up there 20s, tomorrow it's much colder in the teens and then it's back up into the 20s on Friday much colder on Saturday with potentially below zero temperatures when you wake up on Saturday. So pretty cold stuff. Uh, right there. Okay, let me uh, just talk a bit about the jet stream forecast. Very interesting here. Um, when I'm looking at this, I'm looking for the brighter colors. These are uh, jet level winds, so they're at about 30,000 feet up in the atmosphere. Um, this is what tends to steer the weather around, provide some extra lift. It's the storm track, essentially, and you can see it blasting straight out of the west, straight out from basically west to east. So whatever's out of the Pacific, it's bringing in, and that's a pretty warm flow most of the time. Um, so we'll start this at lunchtime today. Here's late today, and you can kind of see the, the storm system over the Great Lakes in the Midwest. It's a little bit of weakness or dip in the jet right there. Now, out west, things just continue to rock and roll here. Um, okay, here we are, lunchtime on Thursday the 6th. You can kind of, here, here it comes. Now, here's late on the 6th. Here's early on the 7th. You see the, the trough or the dip in the jet. Here comes that storm system. And then it begins to move into the interior. Here's late on Friday the 7th. Um, so this is that storm that will be a little bit colder, but certainly stronger with more wind energy across a lot of the Intermountain. Um, and that moves on by. Here's Saturday. Here's late Saturday. Um, and you look to the west and, and it's still active, right? I mean, the jet stream's still pulling in energy. You can see the little weaknesses and the dips in the jet all the way through. Here's Sunday early. Another um, storm system right there. Here's Monday the 11th, or Monday the 10th, excuse me. Another storm system escorted in. Here's early Tuesday the 11th. Another storm system escorted in. So it stays active um, all the way through, as it looks, mid-February at this point. Okay, let's look at snow accumulation over time. We'll start this at about 11 o'clock today. So on this forecast, the blue colors are light accumulation under three inches. Greens, three to six. Yellows, six plus. Uh, reds are 10 plus. You can see the snow accumulation uh, across a lot of the Intermountain happening, even as we speak. Uh, okay, so by this afternoon, there's a little... And you, this does indicate some snow over the Wasatch. Um, so I know it hasn't happened yet, but we'll see if we can't squeeze a little bit out. 
And then there's a little bit that tries to drop down into the northern mountains of Colorado. So we'll see about that. And there's your East Coaster. This is early Thursday morning, the ice event through the Ohio Valley up to Michigan, running through Pennsylvania, down to the big cities, Washington, Baltimore, Philly. It'll be nasty. And then that moves up into the northeast with snow accumulation for Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Back to the west. Here comes our final storm. Look at the Sierra getting some snow. Here it comes. It's building. Here we are, 11 a.m. on Friday the 7th. Good snow here through the Wasatch, Tetons, Idaho, Montana. And it drops down into the central and northern mountains of Colorado as the storm slides. And that becomes another storm system for the Midwest with ice and snow accumulation. Pretty good snow right there, possible up into the northeast. That's early Sunday. And the little wave comes through Colorado on Sunday. Drops down across the front range with colder air. Potentially another storm system for the uh, Ohio Valley right there by the time we get into Monday. So you get the idea. Whatever's happening off to the west is getting moved to the east. And it's becoming, a, it's, it's turning into a storm system, storm systems. Uh, so here is early Tuesday the 11th. Another storm comes out of the Rockies, turns into potentially a mess for the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic. Another storm system quickly comes out of California, runs through Colorado on Tuesday the 11th. So that's pretty far out there. I mean, things remain active all the way into mid-February. All right, here's my forecast all of today through the 9th in the Wasatch, 8 to 12 inches between today and the 9th. Most of that's going to come from the storm system on the 7th. In the Tetons, anywhere from 14 to 16 inches, split up between today and the final storm system later in the week. In Colorado, the accumulation is primarily in the central to northern mountains, anywhere you know, from 4 to 12 inches. Most of the, the, the big stuff's up there in the northern mountains. Everybody else, I-70 corridor is 2 to 6 inches less in the southern mountains. Now, in the Sierra, you've got snow today, and then, of course, another, not snow today, um, but you've got one more storm system coming, and I believe that is, let me check my timeline. Yeah, you're in between today. Today's the pause. Uh, afternoon 2-6 into 2-7. That's your next shot of heavy snow. And that's when I think you could pick up about 20 inches of accumulation around um, Tahoe above 7,000 and down, down to Mammoth as well. Pacific Northwest is very light. I've got nothing for Whistler and low numbers in Washington State, 10 to 20 through a lot of Oregon. In Idaho, Idaho, we still have about 10 inches to go through Sun Valley and Brundage, four up there in Schweitzer, northwest Montana, a lot of six and sevens, very light through interior BC. Up in the northeast, pretty good snow pattern here. Nice signal coming out of the northeast through the ninth. Uh, 10 to 14 inches in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and also New York State. Uh, even Massachusetts could see seven or eight inches of accumulation. It's a rolling accumulation, so it doesn't all come at one time. Uh, but pretty good stuff right there. All right, back to the west. Uh, again, a storm system today. And then one more coming behind this through the ninth. And that second one, that second storm system looks to be stronger. Guys, thanks for tuning in here today. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.